Not many Canadians know that TELUS, a national telecommunications company, is one of the most giving companies in the world. But instead of just telling people about all the good things they do, we wanted to find a way that would inspire others to give back to. So we introduced The Giving Effect, the belief that every act of giving inspires another. It gave TELUS a bigger reason to talk about how they give back and why. We started with TELUS's own team members, designed their t-shirts, and asked who inspired them in a call to join the TELUS Days of Giving, an annual event where employees across the country volunteer in their communities. Using animated gifts captured at events across the country, thousands of employees shared their acts of generosity on social media with the Giving Effect hashtag. It was then time to inspire the rest of Canada. Our campaign was supported by an online hub where Canadians could not only get inspired, but get involved and give back we also launched our anthemic film on both TV and social media. Within the first month, the campaign had over 46.4 million impressions, a positive sentiment of 95%, and over 2,300 comments. The giving effect hit home. Our audience was inspired, not just to share it, but to give back. Countless stories of selfless Canadians began to pour in. Ultimately, the giving effect came back full circle. Viewer stories inspired us to help their causes and charities. TELUS was able to surprise some of their followers by helping them give back in a big way. Since the launch of the campaign, there's been a 54% lift in awareness of TELUS's charitable efforts. But more importantly, over 130 projects were funded, and they saw a 10% lift in volunteer hours in 2016, with over 200,000 hours committed. Do you believe every act of giving inspires another? We do.
It's the moment of truth, the 100 meter final. Yeah. Oh, they've come flying out of the block, straight into their stride, but it's too close to call. No, wait, the king of sprint is pulling away. He's taking the lead. He's gonna win gold again. Oh, we've never seen anything quite like this. To tell us more, please welcome Joel Tom. Hello, Wee Day! I'm gonna need your help, okay? If you've ever been cyberbullied, like on Snapchat, Instagram, or through texts, I want you to take out your phone, turn on the flashlight, and let's raise them up in the air. Keep them up. <laughs> now raise your phone if you've ever seen a friend, a family member, or a peer experience online negativity. Okay, you're introducing Jacob next. Wow. Yes, I am. Take a look around. A lot of you have been impacted in some way by cyberbullying. At TELUS, we believe it's part of our responsibility to ensure that digital spaces are safe for everyone while improving lives through the power of technology. Did you know that Canada has the ninth highest rate of cyberbullying? Because we do. And we need to rise above and end the negativity because it affects too many of us to ignore. To share her story, please welcome Linnell Cantwell. I want to tell you about a day that started out like any other, but then changed everything. I was sitting in class when I heard some whispering behind me. I could tell that it was something bad, so I turned around to find out what it was. A list had been posted online ranking the 12 ugliest girls in my school. Not too long after, I found out that I was on the list too. My stomach hit my throat and my head was spinning as I left class. As I walked down the hallway, I broke. I could feel people staring at me like I had 10 heads, and I felt lost in the fog of loneliness and confusion. It took some time, but I realized that I had a choice to make. I could react with anger and negativity, or I could reach out to the other victims who might be feeling sad like me. I chose to rise above. I got out my cell phone and I wrote a Facebook post. I wanted to let everyone know that I was so much more than what they saw. I'm kind, I'm accepting, and I'm funny. And so was every other girl on that list. We were, and we are, so much more. I posted it, and I went to gym class, never expecting what was about to happen. When the final bell rang, I pulled out my phone 
and saw thousands of notifications. My one little post had gone viral. Messages of support poured in from across the country. Thousands of people were sharing my posts and relating to my experience. It made me realize that I was not alone, and it made me feel proud, strong, and beautiful. I chose to rise above. The people who shared kind words chose to rise above. By being a part of we, you're choosing to rise above. We are more than words or labels. What people say does not define who you are as a person. If you're going through it too, reach out to your friends and family or go to the Tell Us Wise website for advice and resources that will help. Together, we can all rise above cyberbullying. We need to rise above cyberbullying, and we can all do something right now to make a difference. While you're here at We Day, you have access to Tell Us Rise Above Snapchat filter. We all use Snapchat, right? Okay. So every time you use it, Tell Us will donate $1 to the We Charity. Think about it. If everyone used it right now, we could raise $20 thousand dollars awesome right and tell us has a surprise for you inside your grab bag so make sure you check that out let's rise above cyberbullying together street lights that move around with you and they will light the way to wherever you want to go. You would have an app on your mobile phone so they know where you are via GPS. You put in your waypoints where you want to go to and they will take you there. This direct line initiative marks a very positive use for drone technology. It's exciting to know that they're going to be demoed tonight and we can see just how good they are 
and how real this project could be in the future. These drones involve quite a lot of advanced technology. They involve mesh networking, which allows the drones to talk to each other and to position themselves in a very accurate formation so they can illuminate the road just right. Just imagine that you come home from work, it's already dark, and you want to go out for a run. With these drones, you can call in the fleet lights, and away you go. You've got your own personal spotlight to run it. If you've got a video link and an audio link, that would allow it to be used by emergency services to get to the scene of an accident really quickly. To see it and be a part of this is pretty magical. Got some news today from the radio man He spoke the words somber and as softly as he can The world stood still And the sky opened up I made my way to fill up my coffee cup Then it occurred to me as the daylight sky shone blue Today's the day that Johnny met June He waited a while, he knew that he would He was gonna hang around here for as long as he could The days went by, and hours idle past He was never sure just how long he would last But there's not much love in a lonely room Today's the day that Johnny met June Have a good summer. You too. Thanks. Hey, you must be bored. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy that I was running to in the library. You're kind of oh. Yeah. Oh. Like a guilty. So. Oh my God. <laughs> so you like to write on desks? Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Ich habe Höhenangst. Die Atmung wird schneller, ich kriege Herzklopfen. Studies show that with constant practice, people can overcome their fear of heights. So, we created a VR program called Be Fearless. Participants all over the world trained with Samsung Gear VR in various levels. And after four weeks of training, they were invited to face their fear. Amazing, I want to go again. <laughs> nice. I'm sorry I haven't been online much lately but I'm back, I'm here. Um, I've had a bit of a rough time but I'm going to be doing a video today on how to cover up. I'm first going to start with some foundation. 
if you apply a colour that is just gently off tone with your own skin tone, you can cover any fresh bruising. So just apply it lightly to start off and you can build it up as you go. If you've got a lot of bruising from being pushed hard against a coffee table, you can gently apply layer after layer and you will cover it up slightly. I know it might hurt. Just, just try your best. And that's, that's looking a little bit better so far. For my lips I'm using a little bit more foundation. You might want to put concealer on over any splits that are caused from watches or rings. If you've got some bruising from a jealous type of partner, you can always just put your hair down to the side. If it's not long enough, don't worry because the scarf is ideal for this. So I'm going to be using a scarf and you can kind of hide it and cover it up. So that's perfect like that.
I used to get pocket money as a kid for doing the dishes, tidying my room every morning before school. Yeah, mowing yeah. the lawns for me. We do jobs and then we get pocket money. Anything really, washing the car, breaking leaves. I put my clothes out. I feed my dog. Sometimes I have to wait for a day to get my money. I'm always writing IOUs for their pocket money. I just always forget. It's not fun waiting for my money. Don't carry no. any real money anymore, just um, phone in my pocket and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Clever Cash is a cashless money box. When pocket money time comes around, a mum or dad can sit down with their child and swipe the money on their phone in the ASB Mobile Banking app, and Clever Cash then syncs and reflects that balance. So the child can see that they've got their pocket money, which is safe and secure in ASB servers. So our logic that as we started to explore with customers was that it's harder to teach your children about money if they can't touch it and feel it and, and see it. And so anything we could do to make that a richer, more tangible experience would be beneficial. I love the way their little eyes light up when you see them use Clever Cash. He blows his trunk and he laughs. I like how he has a tally on his tummy. He's really, really cute. One of his great achievements, one of Rembrandt's great achievements, was to portray human emotions in a much more convincing way than artists had before him, and in many ways for all time. At ING, we believe in the power of innovation, what it can mean to people. We want to bring this innovative spirit to our sponsorship of Dutch art and culture. We knew that for this challenge, we needed to team up with experts from various fields to make this come to life. We're using a lot of data to improve business life. But we haven't been using data that much in a way that touches the human soul. You could say that we use technology and data like Rembrandt used his paints and his brushes to create something new. The first step was to study the works of Rembrandt in order to create an extensive database. We gathered the data from his collection of paintings from many different sources, including 3D scans and upscale images using a deep learning algorithm. Because a significant percentage of Rembrandt paintings were portraits, we analyzed the demography of the faces in these paintings, looking at factors like gender, age, and head direction. The data led us to the conclusion that the subject should be a portrait of a Caucasian male with facial hair between 30 and 40 years old, in dark clothing with a collar, wearing a hat, and facing to the right. From there, we started to extract features only with faces that were related to that specific profile. And we had to create a whole painting from just data. And we used uh, statistical analysis and various algorithms to extract the features that make Rembrandt Rembrandt. We took parts of the face and we started to compare them. And then based on this, we we're able to create a typical Rembrandt eye or nose or mouth or ear. After generating the features, we were focusing on the face proportions. We used an algorithm that can detect over 60 points in a painting. We were able to align the faces and to estimate the distance between the eyes, the nose and the mouth and the ears. A painting is not a 2D picture. It's 3D. You can see the canvas, you can see the process, and that's what makes the painting come alive. A hive map is essential to make the painting a painting. 
we incorporated the height map into the painting and printed on a 3D printer that uses a special paint-based UV ink. It printed many layers, one on top of the other, which resulted in the height and texture of the final painting. sometimes a magical moment to see a painting for the first time. Even if it's computer generated, for me it is something special. I would have believed if I would saw it in a museum that it would have been a, a real Rembrandt, uh, just one I haven't seen before. It will be interesting to see Rembrandt looking at it. He will be happy that there are people trying to understand him and trying to create something out of that, so I think he will be happy. The next Rembrandt makes you think about where innovation can take us. What's next? IKEA's products have always been inspired by how people live in the real world. There's a variety of everyday dilemmas that can be solved or improved by our products. How could we remind people of this? These days, most of us turn to the internet for answers when problems arise. To prove that IKEA can be a part of the solution, we created what we like to call retail therapy. We simply renamed IKEA's products as the most common Google searches about relationship problems in Sweden. When you Googled your problem, you found an IKEA product with the exact same name on a site identical to IKEA's main shopping site a product that might help you improve your relationship at home. So whether it's a snoring husband, a never-ending gaming son, or any other relationship problem you have, IKEA can come to the rescue. Or at least put a smile on your face while you keep Googling for an answer. Thanks for watching. I think about the shape. I think about color. I also think about sound. I take it into my brain and I think about what would it look like to me? My tin man has a big toe the size of a house. The lion is small like a toy poodle and has webbed duck feet. And he is very scared of everything. My scarecrow has wooden teeth. His fingernails are really long. And his clothes have tubes on them. And that's Dorothy. She looks like me. Everyone has a favorite movie. Now, people with visual disabilities can find theirs. Comcast is proud to introduce the first talking guide from Xfinity. Visit emilyzaz.com for more. The Emerald City is pretty much all emeralds. The grass is emerald, the dirt is emerald, every building is emerald. Instead of stars, there are emeralds, and it rains and snows emeralds. We found Emily, a seven-year-old who has been blind since birth, and she told us what she sees when she watches The Wizard of Oz. The Tin Man would look like a smooth tin. I imagine his feet looking kind of strange. We brought her vision to life, exactly as she described. As per Emily's description, uh, he walks on his webbed front hands, back feet curled up behind him with tiny toes the size of a fingernail. I approve it. Ooh, that's cool. Not as well <laughs> done. Emily's Oz became a documentary a traveling multimedia installation, and a TV commercial on the Oscars. This was all housed on the disability-friendly web and mobile site. We made sure nobody was left out of the experience. Emily's Oz was the first national commercial to feature video description. A funnel-shaped tornado swirls. We created an accessible version of the original film and released it to millions on demand. Watch a golden bubble descending from the sky. Emily showed us that the power of entertainment is universal. She is not blindness. She's a beautiful little girl who happens to be blind. Do you know who this is? The Tin Man. The Tin Man, you got it! Whoever made that commercial, let them make the f***ing Oscars. Make me feel something 
the way that commercial made me feel. Thankfully, Emily's world will live on for generations to come at the Smithsonian, alongside Dorothy's ruby slippers. We all have a favorite movie. And now, thanks to Talking Guide from Comcast. Movies. The Wizard of Oz. People with visual disabilities can find theirs. Evolved in the Cretaceous period, leaf-cutter ants form the largest, most complex animal societies on our planet, next to humans. But it took leaf-cutter ants 130 million years to finally turn their daily routine into a proven political medium. On the 50th birthday of the Worldwide Fund of Nature, 500,000 inhabitants of the Cologne Zoo started a five-day protest march. The Ant Rally. To raise their voice for the rainforest, to protest against its devastation, to protect their habitat, to ensure the survival of many endangered species, and finally, to call for support for their mission. The message, followed by 30,000 zoo visitors, got carried by online news, the blogosphere, social networks, and, of course, traditional media. For the first time in history, insects stood up, marched out, and went viral, turning advertising into advertising.